Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas Pro 18 tutorial for you. And today we're gonna be looking at the new rework they did with motion tracking. And just in case you didn't know, Vegas Pro 18 is also included in Vegas Post, which is a post-production software that includes Vegas Pro, Vegas Image, and Vegas Effects. All of all that information and affiliate links posted in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump right into Vegas 18. All right, so we have Vegas 18 loaded up right here. Now, motion tracking in Vegas 18 is completely changed. Before, you would normally just drag and drop a clip in like I do right now, and then here you'd go over to Bezier Masking, and then drag and drop that onto here. That'll load up the masking, you'd position it however you wanted, go down to the mask, and down here you'd see a track button, but that is no longer there. They've removed all tracking functionality out of Bezier Masking and left it just a masking tool, which is still extremely useful because this mask can now have tracking points added to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from the clip and close this. Now, if you wanna motion track the new way, you go up to tools, go down to video, and you'll see motion tracking right here. You can select this or hold alt and press M on the keyboard. So we're gonna select it, and the motion tracking UI comes up, this little bitty window right here. Now, if you're not selected on a clip, everything's grayed out and you can't click anything. But once you select the clip you wanna track, this little add region button lights up. So if you click it, a shape appears on your video preview. And from here you can click and drag this around or you can grab each point individually and make a custom four point shape. Going down the options, we have track outside region. You can select this and basically it tracks whatever's outside of the shape you create. Most people are gonna keep this unchecked because they wanna track an object. So we're gonna uncheck that. Precision, if you click that, we drop down, we have fast, balanced, and accurate. By default, it's on accurate, and most of the time you'll want it on accurate. If you drop it down to balanced or fast, you may get faster processing times, but it may lose the track or be just a little less accurate than accurate. So I'm gonna keep it on accurate. And then we have mode. If you drop this down, you have five things. Location, rotation location, scale and location, shape and location, and perspective. These all are basically self-explanatory. If you wanna track just the location, you can do this. If you wanna do the rotation of the objects and the location, you can do this one. But if you want to planar track something, which basically means you're tracking it in a 3D space, you can choose perspective and that will do that for you. We have a show motion vectors checkbox under here as well that you can select after you're done tracking and it'll show you all the motion vectors and tracking points that it detected. And then finally at the bottom we have our tracking buttons. Starting from all the way to the left, you can track backwards. This will process the whole clip left of where your cursor's at and track everything it can. Now, even if you lose the track during a certain point, it's still going to finish out all the way, so it won't stop once you've lost the track. Then next to that, we have track one frame back at a time. So if you want to be really meticulous, you can click this button for one frame tracking. Very convenient. Now, the coolest thing right here is track both directions. If you have your cursor in the middle like I do right here, and you want to track left and right, you select that one, and it'll do just that. It'll track one side, and then it'll start and track the other side. It's great. And then we have track one frame to the right and continuous track to the right. Now beside here, we have two buttons that do the exact same thing. And once you've completed a track and have motion tracking data in here, these buttons will allow you to copy and paste this onto different events or pieces of media. So I'm gonna go ahead and track this phone screen and I'm gonna do a perspective planar track. Now you can't zoom in on this at all. So I like to make my preview window really big because that really helps out. From here, I'm just gonna drag this over here to the very edge. You know, be pretty precise about it. Try to make it even. That looks pretty good to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit track both directions. So it's gonna track it left and right automatically. So I select that. You'll see it starts to track and it's pretty quick about it too. So all right, it finished. And it looks like it lost the track right here, which is perfect for showing you guys how to fix that. So I'm gonna drag this back up and I'm gonna go frame by frame. So I'm gonna press left on my keyboard to see where the track was and I'm gonna find where it was lost and it looks like it broke off right about here. So I'm gonna go to right where it got the last accurate position, and then I'm gonna do one keyframe back. And it looks like it's finding it perfectly fine. So I'm gonna click backwards track and see if it can pick up the track where it left off. And it looks like it did it just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this out and see how accurate it was. That's looking really good so far. So now if we want it, we can click this checkbox and show the motion vectors, which is basically what Vegas used to track it. And we see it looks like it took those circles and used those as reference points for a very accurate track, which is awesome. So I'm gonna uncheck this. And now I'm gonna delete this audio track 
So now I'm going to show you two things. The first thing is I'm going to show you how to replace your track with an image. So I'm going to right click and insert new video track. And then I'm going to drag and drop a picture roughly the same size as my phone onto the timeline. And this is a picture of me. And so now I'm going to stretch it out to make sure it matches. And you'll see that nothing's selected right here because we didn't track anything on the portrait picture. But if I select the video clip, we see all of our tracking data right there. Now down here, you can click either this button or this button. Now if I select this right here, it'll show anything that's overlapping my track. So this picture is overlapping the tracked video right here. But if I dragged it all the way to the edge where it's not overlapping at all, and I select this and click the drop down, I won't see the picture as an option to mess with. So if I drag my picture back over here, and then I select my tracked media right here, then if I choose one of these options, I will see my portrait. And so when I hover over it, you'll see add pip effects. And this is going to copy the motion track data to the picture in picture plugin and apply it to your picture. So if I select that, then it's going to throw my picture on this track. Now you'll see it looks kind of weird, but it's lining up perfectly with the track itself. But it looks real compressed. Now to change that, you can just open the pan and crop. And then over here where it says source, you can say maintain aspect ratio, click it and say no. And then that fixes that little compression it does. And then I can play it and see what it looks like. And that looks really awesome. That lined up perfectly. Now you can go above and beyond and add a green screen to this to get rid of the green outline and just make it blend in nicer, which I'll skip to right now. I keyed out that green part, added a little border, added some motion blur, and you can get something to the results of this, which looks awesome. So let's go ahead and do a different version of this and add some text. So now I'm going to go ahead and delete this picture and we're going to add text to this. So I'm going to say insert video track. I'm actually going to delete the motion track and chroma key as well. Do it all again. So select my clip, go up to tool, go to video, go down to motion tracking. I'm going to select a new mask and I'm just going to track this circle right here. And then I'm going to go down to mode and I'm only going to track the location because I want to attach some text to this specific spot. And then I'm going to go ahead and track both directions. And let's go ahead and see. It looks like it lost the track right there. It caught the track all the way to the right hand side, but it looks like on the left hand side it broke off a little bit. So right about here is the first one. So I'm going to track one frame back, back, press back, and let's see if it continues and catches correctly. And it looks like it did. So let's look at this track all the way through. All right, looks good. So I want to add some text to that. Let's go down to Media Generator. And then you cannot use legacy text for this. You have to go down to Titles and Text and then drag the default or one of these on here. So I'm going to close this real quick. I'm going to select my track to media, then go over to my options. I'm going to hover over the Titles and Text and go Add Pip Effects. You can also do Add Location, but you usually get better results with adding Pip Effects. So I'm going to click that. And now it has attached this text to that point. So as you see, that text is always going to be latched on there. Now when you add it to the pip effects, you can open the pan and crop and move the text around and even shrink it to position it better without adjusting the track or the latching point. But once you've successfully done that, you have learned how to motion track in the new Vegas Pro 18. And there you have it. If this tutorial helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. And if you want to support the channel through Patreon, you can do that as well. The link is in the description below. So thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all of my subscribers up there at the top. Be sure to check out their channels for some awesome content.